Of all the things I said in the Godzilla Planet Eater review, I always knew that this would be the thing I'd be coming back to expand upon. I've seen a lot of people trying to provide explanations as to why the ending of Godzilla the Planet Eater, in which Haruo takes the last vulture and Yuko's nanometal-infused body and does a kamikaze run so they can all get blown to bits by Godzilla, is actually not as bad as I made it out to be. But I honestly can't say any one of them has really convinced me. The reason I remain unconvinced boils down to Haruo himself. He has not undergone any character development, not even a single iota. And honestly, that is not a good thing. Let's really look at this now. Haruo's been through three movies. Two of those times he's been trying to kill Godzilla and he failed miserably. And that whole time, he has been fueled by the emotions of hatred and anger exclusively. That is all he feels. That's basically his entire being. No wonder the Hotua make him into the god of wrath at the end of the film. In Planet Eater, we learn that this is actually a problem for the entire human race because it is Haruo's hatred that serves as a sort of earthly anchor for the interdimensional flying spaghetti monster that this movie is passing off as Ghidorah. Somehow, that's enough to summon him to Earth, even though they never really explain how or why, and it seems as if Ghidorah is able to manifest on Earth purely through Metpheus' ritual, but never mind that. So you would think that after three movies worth of content, Haruo would have figured out by now that since his hatred is a problem, he needs to let go of that hatred. And when we initially go through that ending montage that switches art styles for no real reason, it seems as if that's what the movie is implying will happen. He's got a family, or at least he's going to have a family soon. He's integrating into this nice civilization that's somehow the exception to the rule of all civilization is evil and causes monsters to appear. And he's going to finally live a happy life, perhaps. Maybe learn from his mistakes and guide the next generation into a brighter future. But that's not what happens. Instead, the Doctor character says, Hey look, I extracted a little bit of nanometal from Yuko's body and I got the vulture to work again. And then suddenly Haruo remembers, Oh, that's right, I hate Godzilla. At that point, any potential character development he might have undergone is tossed right out the window completely. He reverts back to the character he was at the very beginning of this trilogy, wherein he was ready to blow himself up for what he thinks is a just cause, only this time he actually goes through with it. Absolutely nothing has changed. Like I said in my initial review, he could potentially learn to just let go of that. He can do all the work to make himself a better person, someone who is not filled with hatred, someone whom Ghidorah cannot use as an anchor. But he doesn't. He takes the easy way out instead. Now I'm sure some of you may say, but wait a minute, doesn't this tie into Metpheus' speech at the beginning of Planet Eater, in which he says free will is an illusion? Clearly that's meant to be a part of what goes on here. Haruo doesn't change because he literally can't change. He has no choice in the matter because he has no free will. Well, if he has no free will, why did he rebel against Metpheus and prevent Ghidorah from conquering the world and killing Godzilla? Remember, Haruo was cultivated by Metpheus specifically because he was so angry and so filled with hatred that he made the perfect anchor for Ghidorah. That's the whole reason he was singled out. So, logically, you would think that if free will really wasn't a factor here, he wouldn't have had a choice. He would not have been able to rebel against Metpheus. Haruo would have gone through with it, and Ghidorah would have won and destroyed everything. But instead, he is able to rebel at the crucial moment and completely ruin the plan to destroy Earth and Godzilla. So... Sure seems like he has free will to me. He was able to, in that moment, rebel against what he was destined to do, what he was practically programmed to do. If that's not free will, or at least an example of free will, then I don't know what is.
So that scene gives us an example of how Haruo clearly is able to change. Yet, for some reason, the movie concludes that he is unable to change. So in order for this message about free will being an illusion to ring true, Haruo should not have been able to defeat Metpheus. Someone else should have intervened. Or, perhaps, Godzilla could have beaten the bad guys all by himself, thereby introducing Haruo to the possibility that maybe Godzilla doesn't deserve to be hated that much. But what am I saying? That would require Godzilla to be an important part of this movie, and we all know that was never the intention. So that's another example of how the movie manages to contradict itself while failing to get its message across. But either way, the point remains the same. Haruo does not undergo character development over the course of these films. Now the question is, why doesn't he undergo character development? What is it that keeps him static from the beginning of the movie all the way through to the end, in spite of all evidence to the contrary? Well, it's because Haruo isn't a character. That's right, Haruo is not a character. He is a construct. He is nothing more than a vessel for Gen Urobuchi to pour all of his misanthropic views of humanity into. That's what became clear to me as I was watching The Planet Eater. At first, I thought Haruo's one-dimensional characterization was because he was just poorly written. But it turns out, it was intentional. It was because Haruo is not meant to actually be a person. If Haruo were a multi-dimensional character, he would have grown over the course of these three films. But because he's not a multi-dimensional character, indeed because he's not a character at all, he's not allowed to grow. So, why the heck is he the protagonist? Why are we following a non-character as our main character? And bear in mind, this revelation that he is not a character and not allowed to grow comes after a montage that tried tricking the audience into thinking he had. Which is kind of underhanded. And all of this was done to emphasize the message that civilization and technology are evil, unless of course they're not evil, as exemplified by the Hotua. You know, the word I'm about to use is not one I break out very often, because I find it has a tendency to be misused by people. But here I think it's appropriate. Godzilla the Planet Eater is pretentious. It is stupidity masquerading as brilliance. But when you really look deep into it, you realize that there's no substance to be found here. Line Haruo Sakaki up against any other character you want to. Aaron Yeager from Attack on Titan, Rorschach from Watchmen. Doesn't matter, he's always going to fall short. Because unlike those other examples I can name, he's just not a character. And therefore, he really should not have been our protagonist. As a construct, Haruo's only reason for existing is to emphasize the messages put forth by these movies. However, as I've already established, these movies don't seem to understand how to properly deliver their messages. Meaning that, ultimately, nothing of substance is said, and all that's accomplished is a complete waste of time. But hey, they're just meant to be filler, right? Just meant to keep Godzilla in the public eye between American movies. Whoever said that meant they had to be good. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, as well as subscribe to the channel for more content of a similar nature. Also, check the description for links to our Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon pages, as well as the Amazon link for the novel Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, penned by yours truly. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.